thought Tremaine Hawkins started off our morning, don't you think? Yeah, I mean, it was... <laughs> Song crossed over. It's very big in the discos. Does that bother you at all that people are dancing to your music? Well, I tell you, Carol, um, I don't think the word is quite bother me. I was very um, affected by the the venue of which my record company A and M Records decided to to place the record. Uh, when they heard the record, they felt that uh, uh, it was crossover material. Um, we went into the, the, uh, the record contract, them knowing that I'm a gospel singer, that I, first of all, I'm a Christian, and I believe in the Lord, and, I, and I'm a minister of gospel music. However, the song that was given to me by a friend of mine, Robert Wright, who was the producer and the writer of the song, uh, felt that um, my market uh, should be broadened and that other people that wouldn't normally come to a gospel concert would get a chance to hear Tremaine also. And uh, so that was the venue that the record company decided to put it in. And I was uh, pretty much leery, I guess, uh, about how my, my bass audience would feel about me. And I really stayed before the Lord in prayer a whole lot. How did they I respond don't, to that? Um, I think they had mixed emotions, um, uh, quite frankly, Carol. However, I feel that uh, my life... Uh, backs up what I sing about more than what people do to my music. I think that um, the main key today is to, to get the message to everybody. And all the young kids won't come to a Tremaine Hawkins um, concert that is in a church per se, mm -hmm. but they will go to the discos. And my focus is to allow God to to use me in whatever avenue he decides to. And if it happens to be disco and they dance, as long as they get the message, as long as I think it's important. Your life, you've had some ups and downs here. You're on the up now, but uh, yes. you've had some hard times too. Oh, most certainly. Mostly can. with your music or uh, your career, were you dissatisfied with what was going on or what? Uh, well, not so much with my career, uh, mostly my personal life. I had a loss of child, um, uh, a child that I really wanted. Um, uh, I went through a lot of marital problems. However, um, my, my life, as you say right now, is, is on the up because of, of my dedication to the Lord and knowing that He is the answer. He makes me happy, not in a child, not in a husband, not in a career. God is what makes you happy. Mm. And, and the life in Him is what, what's important. Do people say to you, Tremaine, you probably could make ten times the money if you were to sing secular music more or less. Would, does that bother you at all that that comes up? Does anyone ever ask you that, or make that statement to you? Yes, I've, I've been approached uh, many times, Carol, by, by that question, and, and, and um, I usually respond that, uh, to me, if I was only out to make money, I wouldn't be out uh, singing gospel. Uh, but I'm a minister in gospel music and I love what I sing about because it also ministers to me and just just to be out there singing to make money as as all of you know and and across this country it it doesn't satisfy it fizzles out um, money uh, is makes you comfortable but it doesn't make you happy with that I don't know making this transition over here. You had a lot to think about. I'm going to give you a chance to ask some of your questions. Now, Jermaine Hawkins and Richard Smallwood, you have a question here. Yes, I'd like to direct my question to Jermaine. Jermaine, yes. I'd like to know um, how did your career first started off? Yeah. When, I was, uh, <laughs> when I was about four years, old, four years old, I think my career started. I was singing in my grandfather's church, mm -hmm. and at that time, I felt I was career-minded. I wanted to do something uh, with with my talent that God had given me. You knew that at how old at four. age? Four years at old. At four years Ooh, old. Frightening. That well, I knew I wanted to sing in front of audiences. As we were just talking um, while they were having a commercial carol, the thrill, it was there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Let me get to Richard a minute because as Tremaine was talking about not doing this for the money, I w you were nodding your head. You're in yes. agreement on this. <laughs> but you do do other things. You, you do jazz. You, do, you wrote uh, the music for the play, Sing the Hell You Sing. So yeah. tell me how you put all that together in your head here. Well, I really don't play jazz. I'm influenced by a lot, uh, by a lot of other types of music. Uh, my background is basically gospel and classical. 
uh, and I listen to jazz, so all of that sort of comes in together. clubs together and comes out with whatever I do. Uh, but um, I can identify with what Jermaine is saying, because I started when I was about four years old as well, playing the piano, and my father played, and he used to carry me around. He was a minister as well. He would carry me around and set me up on the podium, and I would sing, and then he would play. And then finally I started picking up, you know, things on the piano. So this little child up here is in, I'm, I'm, I don't know what's going to happen to this <laughs> It's time for a phone call. Go right ahead, please. You're on the air. Good morning. Good morning. I'd just like to say um, I'm glad to be able to hear, and I'd like to say that I, I enjoy Tremaine's music very much, and I enjoy Richard Smallwood's music very much. I'd like to ask Tremaine if she had the chance to change anything about her career, would she, and has she ever had any formal music training? All right. Would you change anything in formal music training? Uh, yes, I think I would ask uh, Wesley and Richard to move to California <laughs> <laughs> so that they could um, co uh, continue to teach um, gospel singers like myself uh, the correct way to sing. Uh, I've been in formal training for the last two years, and that has been the influence of, of Wesley and Richard. What's and the correct way? As opposed yes. to what you're doing. What, what, what well, you're... I wasn't always doing it correctly. And a lot of gospel singers don't sing correctly. Which is, tell they me sing how... with the spirit and the enthusiasm and the understanding and all that, but not singing from their diaphragm, oh. not knowing where the tones are and how much, how much tone is in the back of the head and, and how placing the tone is. Uh, they don't know all this. They and it's very voice, important. That's right. I see. Yes. Very tragic. Yeah, I want to ask Jermaine if she was prepared to lose perhaps some of her gospel audience as a result of the crossover of this, this record and the, and the upcoming ones? No, I'm not prepared to lose them. And uh, the reason being is because um, the songs that will, um, the com that will come about from Tremaine, the Tremaine that you're hearing now, um, she's no different from, from uh, the one who's saying Going Up Yonder and Changed. And even though the music uh, that surrounds my voice is a little different because it's geared to the young people. Uh, the song that, uh, that, the single that will be released in the next two weeks is called Morning Time. It's called I Wake Up Singing Hallelujah in the Morning Time. And each song is going to get progressively more message. And I have on my album coming out, which uh, is entitled, one of the songs Edwin wrote for me, Edwin Hawkins, my brother-in-law, uh, The Search Is Over. And that is talking about a relationship with the Lord finding out for the first time in your life that you don't have to search in drugs, you don't have to search to alcohol or, or relationships, but the search uh, being over that Christ is the main focus in your life and he is the one that is all in all and through all. And um, they will find that out on this next coming album and also Walter wrote some song, he wrote a song on the album, so I'm hoping that that doesn't happen. I think many of us feel like we've been in church for a little while here. Yeah. We'll go to a break and come right back. Oh, uh, Richard, I've, li um, I've enjoyed your music because you're right here in D.C. where we are. Thanks. And I've admired Tremaine oh, so much. <laughs> oh, that's right. I just wanted to say that... Uh, I sing gospel music too with Genesis too, okay, and uh, right. and you know us. Yes. And yes, uh, I just want to, just want to sing more solo, before my voice goes because I'm getting up there. Oh. <laughs> yes. Do you know the song God's Woman? It's I've a heard gospel. that song. It is Please learn it. It is beautiful. It is beautiful. Yeah. Yes, I have. Um, you used to sing with Andre Crouch. How did you yes. make the change from Andre to Walter? Well, I sang uh, with the Evan Hawkins singers before I sang with Andre. Uh, and there was a transition in it where I moved to Los Angeles. Uh, 